Well, a turning point in cross-border payments between Singapore and the United States. A joint study by Singapore's Central Bank and the New York Federal Reserve shows that distributed ledger technology, also known as DLT, can be used to improve the efficiency of such transactions. The study experimented with using central bank digital currencies to settle payments. MAS says they found that DLT can help settle cross-border payments safely without the need for a central clearing authority and can achieve this in close to real time. It also allows transactions across multiple currency ledgers while maintaining autonomy in each network. More, we're joined by Alan Lim from the Monetary Authority of Singapore. He's Deputy Director and Division Head of the FinTech Infrastructure Office. Now, Mr Lim, uh, you'll have to explain this to us. Um, the whole point of these cross-border payments uh, traditionally, they have relied on a mutually trusted central authority. In this instance, we do no longer need a central clearing authority. And the answer to that is DLT. How does DLT fill this gap that, was, that has traditionally been filled by a central authority? Well, well, thanks. Um, perhaps I'll uh, just start with the context. I think um, the MES um, has been working on improving payments both domestically as well as cross-border. So what we are speaking about today, um, a very focused, maybe a more technical term, we are looking at settlement. So from a consumer perspective, what happens today when I make a payment today, um, I may feel that it's immediate, instantaneous almost, when we do a payment at a retail uh, store, for example. But what happens behind the scene that you may not see is the actual movement of money, um, fund transfer itself. Imagine if I have a paper note and I hand it to you, if you're physically in the room, I would hand it to you. Um, I do not have a copy of that bank note or, or physical note uh, anymore. You have it. So what happens on a cross-border basis is how do we replicate the experience as we would have with a paper note? And that's what we're attempting to solve over here, which is how do we bring down the cost of doing this behind the scene um, through the process which we call um, settlement. So. Wholesale central bank digital currency is an effort to look at how we improve how banks do what I just described behind the scene to facilitate the fund transfer on a cross-border basis involving that transfer of that uh, money uh, behind the scene. And what's what are the issues that we are looking to address uh, uh, with cross-border payments today? In order to effect the equivalent of, of that transferring of that fiscal paper money to you, um, it has to potentially cross, if you are speaking about crossing between Singapore and the US, potentially we're talking about different uh, operating hours, we're talking about potentially different systems uh, that needs to interact with each other. So traditionally, in order to effect the, what we term as settlement, it would have taken days potentially at a significantly higher cost than it should be involving multiple uh, middlemen that acts to facilitate that transfer. So that's what we are looking to achieve. And DLT is just one of the ways in which we are looking and exploring as a possible means to address what we just described. So DLT, uh, you, you just mentioned, is just one of the ways. If you could, in layman's terms, explain how it works and its advantages that you can see now. And if it's just one of the ways, there must also be disadvantages or weaknesses, potential weaknesses in using DLT. What might those be? So if I contrast perhaps with what we have today, which is uh, maybe a centralized way of processing information and validating transactions, that's assuming everybody is operating on what we term as a centralized ledger, or think about it as a common system of record, a database, if you would, um, which everyone has the same view of the records. It's maintained and hosted, operated by a single party. The contrast that we have here is what we term as distributed ledger technology, which assumes that there are many different copies of this uh, ledger or system of records that spread across and hosted by different organizations, validated uh, independently, but yet have the same effect of having consistent record and data. Now, why would you want to do something like that? And the reason for that is because if you are dealing with transactions that potentially, in this case, involving uh, operating across borders, potentially looking at different organizations which have different uh, needs for privacy. Control, etc. 
it, it might have multiple copies maintained independently by different parties, but yet consistent in its approach in having a single point of record uh, in terms of how the different parties that are interacting with the ledger or the system of record uh, view those transactions such that you achieve the same result. Again, that once you've transferred um, the money, um, it no longer stays with the sender. It's now with the beneficiary. So uh, the usual uh, issue with uh, fintech, and you are familiar with this because this is your department, uh, in terms of regulations keeping up with it, the legalities of the different moves and the repercussions of things emerging from these new technologies, do you think regulations are keeping up with DLT being used for cross-border settlement, at least at this point in time? Well, we were looking at this space very carefully. I think uh, more broadly speaking, we've been looking at the digital asset space, which is um, really looking at how we can represent digitally, uh, to uh, tokenize representation or potentially financial assets, real economy assets. And distributed ledger technology is a means in which um, the record of the ownership, uh, the interactions between those digital representations are actually uh, uh, recorded and um, communicate to the parties that are involved. So from a regulation perspective, I think there are some areas that we are looking at. For example, looking at where the additional controls that are required in terms of guarding against or, or preventing money laundering. So AML controls that are put in place, but also looking at how with a new way, a mechanism in which money, for example, is distributed, what are the broader implications as far as uh, financial stability, risk, or in fact, uh, the possibility of uh, um, a need for increased perhaps consumer protection and education, because these are really new ways of payment, for example, uh, and there needs to be uh, safeguards that put in place as uh, consumers, users are interacting with this new uh, system. Oh, thanks so much for making a very difficult topic relatively clear to us. That was Alan Lim from the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Thanks so much for joining us.